Hey guys, it's Becca. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my review on Disney's Pop Century Resort. This is the first time I've sat down to film since getting back from our April trip, so it feels really good to be back in front of the camera, and I'm really excited to share my thoughts on our trip and our time at Pop Century. We were there um, just a couple of weeks ago, so I tried gathering my thoughts while it was all fresh in my mind, so I'm gonna be going over our check-in and check-out process, transportation, dining, the rooms, and then we'll finish the video with kind of talking about my personal experience at Pop Century. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's start with the check-in process. We had actually checked in online, which if you have never done the online check-in with your Disney Resort before, definitely take advantage of that because it allows you to bypass the check-in line itself and you actually get a text or an email with your room number when it's ready. So it's pretty convenient if you just wanna bypass the line and go straight to your room and get your vacation started. It's pretty awesome. But we arrived pretty late that evening and we had done online check-in, but decided anyway to still go to the check-in desk. There was really nobody there, so it, it really didn't cost us any time waiting in line or anything like that. But the reason we wanted to go to the check-in desk was to opt out of mouse keeping. So basically you are able to um, opt out of this service and um, instead of having the cleaning service come to your room every day and make your bed and kind of pick things up, you can opt out of that for a $10 gift card per night. So we were there for four nights and because our first night was considered, we were coming into a clean room, if that makes sense. So our first night had already been cleaned. So the next three nights of our stay, we were able to get a $10 gift card for each of those nights. So totaling $30. So that was pretty awesome and we just got an email um, with a gift card barcode and we could use that for dining, we could use it to pay our room bill, you can, I mean, you can use it on merchandise, anything. And it's just a little barcode on your phone. So that was one reason we wanted to go to the check-in desk. And then we also had a couple gift cards that we wanted to pay off our room bill and things like that. So our check-in process was really simple. They make it really easy. And I had already gotten that text for my room. So we knew exactly where we were supposed to go. We just wanted to take care of a couple things up front. But that was our check-in process. So it was pretty easy. So moving on to the rooms, this resort just recently went under a full renovation. So all of the buildings are completely updated now. So all of the rooms now are that really clean, modern, minimalistic feel, which I really like. And we did a full room tour during our arrival day vlog. So I will link that for you. We definitely had fun with it. So it's a little bit of a unique room tour. So get ready to laugh. Um, anyway, my thoughts on the room itself though. We thought it was perfect because we were not spending a ton of time in our room. The rooms are small, so if you're traveling with a group of people, that was another thing to note, was when you pull that Murphy bed down, it eliminates a lot of the floor space. So you go from feeling pretty spacious to you really don't have a lot of room to walk, which is fine because when, you know, during the day, you can always put that bed up and you have access to that table and chairs again. So it's not a big deal, but it's definitely something to consider. Another thing to note about the rooms would be, even though they are on the smaller side, it has tons of storage. It has a very, and I've heard other people say this, a very cruise ship feel as if you're in like a cruise ship cabin almost. Um, they have taken advantage of every nook and cranny <laughs> in this room to utilize the space. So that is something that's really, really helpful. If you're traveling with a lot of luggage and you want to hang up your clothes and things like that, they do have space for that. So, um, so even though it's on the smaller side, they definitely have a lot of storage, which is awesome. All right, moving on to dining. There is one quick service option and it is the classic hall in the main building. There is no table service restaurant at the resort but the classic hall is available for breakfast lunch and dinner and they do have some late night options that go through midnight so that's really nice 
but people keep asking me, okay, what were your thoughts on the food? What did you think? So on our check-in day, we did get to have dinner at the Classic Hall. So we arrived pretty late and that was kind of our only option. So what I would say about the food is it wasn't bad but it wasn't great. We love quick service restaurants at Disney World. We, we've tried lots of quick service restaurants. We know what our favorites are and we know how good the quick service meals can be at Disney. And so when you're comparing it to other quick service locations and other options that are available, I don't think I would go out of my way to ever eat at the Classic Hall again. And I don't know if I would spend a, if you're on the dining plan, a quick service credit there. I just think there's so many better options available. So that's my thoughts on the Classic Hall. Um, the other thing I was going to add about it is just the feel of it. Our experience was, it was very chaotic. <laughs> there was a lot going on, a lot of people. Depending on what time of day you're there, it can be challenging to find a table. You know, people are walking around with trays of food, with drinks, you're trying to juggle everything, and it's it can just be a little overwhelming. For us, we, we enjoy having a more restful <laughs> vacation and so anything that makes our vacation feel chaotic or stressful we tend to steer away from so that is my thoughts again on the classic haul and not bad but not great so that's what i have to say about the food at pop century <laughs> So next, we're going to talk about transportation. Now, the one nice thing about the Pop Century transportation is it has a dedicated bus system. So unlike the All-Star Resorts, all three of those resorts share one bus system. So if you are at the last resort that the, that bus picks up at, you're getting on to a very crowded bus or it may already be full and you may have to wait for another bus. So that's one thing about POP that is really nice is that it has one bus system. You're not stopping at multiple resorts. You know that when you get on that bus to Magic Kingdom, you are going straight to Magic Kingdom. So that was really nice. I did appreciate that. Um, and there were always buses available. That was another thing. With, if you missed a bus, you see another one pulling in, um, or it was just a few minutes behind. They even had those double wide buses at some points in the day too, especially in the mornings when people were trying to get to the parks around you know 8, 9 a.m. Um, so that was really nice. The other thing I would say about the transportation though, is because Pop is a very crowded resort, the buses are very crowded. So I believe there was only one or two times that we got on a bus and were able to have a seat. Most of the time, our bus experience was us standing and pressed up against a rail with somebody else on our shoulder. So the bus system does get very crowded and that may have been because we were there at a busy time of year, I'm not sure, but that was our experience with the crowds trying to get on the buses. Um, another thing to note is while you're waiting in line, that area is not covered. So luckily it didn't rain while we were there or ever while we were waiting in line. So we never had an issue with that, but I'm imagining if it was pouring down rain one morning, you're having to wait in line just out in the open. So, you know, another thing to note that may be super minor for some people, but then for others, it may be a big deal. Um, so that was one thing that was kind of a little bit of a like, uh, I wish that was covered, um, especially even if it's just really hot out. To have any kind of relief from the sun, you had to stand out of the line and there was another covered area with a couple benches underneath it, but you wouldn't be able to wait in line for the buses. So a lot of times Andy and I would wait in the shade until we saw the line get about halfway full and then we would go jump in line. So that way we weren't just standing out in the sun, but we also kind of had to gauge it to make sure we still got in line soon enough to make sure we got a spot on the bus. And anyway, so that was kind of our strategy with it because 
we just enjoy, we're like, let's wait in the shade. If we can, if there's a way for us to be in the shade, we're gonna be in the shade until the bus comes. I just wish that that whole area was covered. Um, but again, super minor, it's not a big deal. The bus system moved really quickly. So, uh, you know, even if you were standing up there for five or 10 minutes, I, I don't think we ever experienced a wait longer than 10 minutes um, for a bus, which is really good for the Disney bus system. So that's what I would say for the Pop Century transportation. Lastly, I want to share my thoughts on our overall experience at Pop Century. Now, I know that we have some diehard Pop Century fans watching, and I feel like this part is gonna get some thumbs down, but that's okay. <laughs> so many of you have been asking me, how was it? What did you think? Do you recommend this resort? Would you go back? And I just wanted to really gather my thoughts to give you guys an honest review and let you guys know without really sugarcoating anything, what we really thought about this resort. So here are my honest thoughts. One of the big things about this resort is that it does have that outdoor motel style entrance. So there's a lot more foot traffic and noise happening at this resort, which is natural. I mean, that's gonna happen at any resort like that or any hotel really. Um, but our issue was, it was just very loud. You could hear everything going on. It's a very family friendly resort. So you have a lot of kids and there were a lot of high school groups traveling at that time of year. And I know that the all-star resorts and Pop Century, um, those are the places that draw those high school groups. So there were a lot of high school kids running around, um, which is fine, but there was just a lot of noise, a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming at late hours in the night and then early morning hours as well. We were right by the pool. We had a pool view, um, which sounds like it would be great, but the pool when we were there was open until 11. So at, uh, right up until 11 o'clock at night, you could hear everything happening down at the pool. So again, another thing to note, if you like to be in your room before, you know, 10 o'clock at night, nine o'clock, maybe you have little ones that go to bed early. Um, I don't know if I would recommend a pool view. It sounds like it's an upgrade, but I didn't see it that way. I wish we had not had a pool view <laughs> that we could have been on the opposite end of the building away from the noise in the pool. Another thing I noticed was that the walls were really thin. So you can hear conversations happening next door. You can hear blow dryers. You can hear toilets flushing, um, pretty much everything. And there were a couple mornings that we did want to sleep in, but it just wasn't possible with all that was going on at around our building. Another thing we noticed outside of the actual building and other guests around us was the maintenance trucks that would be running at very early hours in the morning. So cast members who are just doing their job, who are keeping the property clean and manicured, cleaning out the pool, just doing an amazing job at what they do, but those trucks were very loud. <laughs> so again, another thing to just be aware of, I wish that we just had known how much would be going on at the resort um, at at early hours in the morning. So 6 a.m. rolled around and there was a lot going on. So those were just a handful of things that made our experience at Pop a little less than wonderful. <laughs> um, granted, we are used to staying at deluxe resorts. And so when you go from only staying at deluxe resorts down to a value resort, you do notice a difference. So I think if Pop had been our first Disney resort we'd ever stayed at, we may have viewed it a little bit differently. Just, I mean, being completely honest, but when you're comparing it to Animal Kingdom Lodge, the Polynesian, Wilderness Lodge, places like that, it's just tough to compete with. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to keep an open mind with it. But when I'm thinking about the price that I paid, to stay at Pop Century for four nights, and then the price that I paid to stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge for four nights, there was only a $50 difference because we were renting DVC points. And so when I think about it in those terms, you know, a big reason a lot of people would consider a value resort is to save money. But for us, 
If we're spending the same amount of money to stay at a deluxe resort than we are at Pop Century, I will pick a deluxe resort. <laughs> I mean, again, being totally honest, um, that would be, I would be more drawn to stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge again for a similar price than I would to stay at Pop Century. So you just have a different atmosphere. And I think that's what it comes down to. If you don't mind the hustle and bustle and the energy that comes with Pop Century, then you'll love it. So in conclusion, I think I would recommend Pop Century to families with small kids who love the over-the-top Disney theming and, you know, enjoy, like I said, the energy and excitement of this resort. Um, it definitely has that going on. You walk in and it's just fun. It's just a fun place. Um, but on the flip side, if you are planning a honeymoon or an anniversary trip or even a once in a lifetime Disney trip, I think there are other resorts that may be a better fit. For Andy and I, like I said, we just enjoy deluxe resorts. We enjoy the experience of our vacation feeling a little more relaxing, a little more peaceful, um, quiet, <laughs> and I think that's what draws us to the deluxe resorts more so than pop. Um, so I, I don't know if there would ever be a scenario again where we would stay at Pop Century. Ooh, I know there's so many people that are like, oh, what? But I just want to be honest with you guys. I don't know if we will stay there again. I'm glad we got to experience it. I'm glad that we checked it off our list and now we know <laughs> what our true thoughts are on this resort. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful hearing my honest review and honest thoughts on the resort um, from someone who has stayed at several Disney resorts, um, you know, just to get my take on it. Um, you know, a little bit of a different look at this resort. We don't have kids and it's just the two of us. So, you know, we do travel differently and, um, and that's okay. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on Pop Century. I would love to hear what you guys think about this resort. So again, keep in mind that this is just my opinion. This is just my personal experience on this resort. Um, I know others may have had a completely different experience and that is awesome. So I would love to hear from you. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure that you are subscribed if you are not already and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.